Hey, my Lobos. Um, this is chapter 19 of Chains by Lori Haas Anderson. In chapter 18, um, a trader that was one of the people that um, was part of the conspiracy to kill General, General George Washington um, was hanged. And um, Isabel explained it as almost being like a fair. People were like in good spirits and she said all it needed was like fair food and the attractions that a fair would normally go with because the people were generally excited to be at a hanging um so this is chapter 19 most heartily we beseech thee with any favor to behold our most gracious sovereign lord king george and to replenish him with the grace of thy holy spirit the minister paused to draw breath and bless our gracious queen Charlotte, their Royal Highnesses, George, Prince of Wales, and Princess Dowager of Wales, and all the royal family. The Reverend had so much beseeching to do for the royal family, I thought we'd be stuck in church for a week. Trinity was an Anglican church, filled with prayers for England, burning incense and ministers in fancy dress. It dis discommodated me some to attend but madam gave me no choice at home we went to con went to the congregational church with 10 pews windows that looked out on the ocean and a preacher who always wore black i liked it better intense made me sneeze we humbly beseech they did a pack of beseeching at trinity the church was more than half empty compared to the first sunday madam brought us what with so many folks melting into the countryside like master locked and martha washington and her ladies were north on the island and those left in the pews were loyalists this made matters easier for the reverend who <clears throat> who could pray the way he wanted without worry of insulting men who owned the rebel cannons ruth bounced her corn husk doll on her lap and flew it through the air some folks grumbled about servants and slaves being forced to sit in the upstairs gallery. To my mind, being in the upstairs meant we were closer to God, and our prayers got there first. Besides, nobody upstairs fussed when Ruth played on the floor. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers. I beseech thee, O Lord, by thy great mercy take us home by the band of Colonel Reagan. Take us home in all thy glory. Take us home. Ad Astra, Ad Astra, Ad Astra. Ruth tugged on my skirt. It was time to stand up again and pray. Below us, Madame leaned against the sturdy figure of Lady Seymour, who had come to the house early and forced Madame out of bed and into a Sunday dress. She covered the bruises still visible on Madame's face with thick white layer of a Malinu's Italian paste and told her she must now show she must not show weakness. We sat down again, up, down, up, down. Yon minister could never make up his mind. My belly grumbled. Good thing the service was drawing to a close. Just a little more beseeching, a few more amens, and we'd head home for a cold pigeon pie and sour pickles. Ruth's fingers drifted to her nose for some unsightly digging. As I reached for her hand, the front door of the church slammed open with a thud. The reverend near fainted with surprise. A young boy ran halfway down the center aisle begging. Begging your pardon, Reverend, he shouted, but the British have sailed into the harbor. The British Army was hardly marching down Wall Street, but ten ships had docked down river on Staten Island. Ruth and me followed behind Madame and Lady Seymour as we strode with the crowd to the battery as fast as our skirts would allow. Madame quivered with excitement, but was wise enough not to say a word, for we found ourselves in a crowd of rebels furious about the arrival of King George's boys. Someone fired a cannon a stone's throw away from where we stood. Gunpowder smoke drifted across the crowd as soldiers started running every which way, <laughs> carrying on about orders this and orders that. Someone fired a musket and a woman shrieked. Two more muskets blasted. Rough voices commanded the firing to cease. Mothers chased after their children. Five men in frontier leggings and leather shirts sprinted past us, rifles at the ready. Should I grab Ruth and run for the barracks? Could we slip away to sanctuary in the commotion? I looked for Colonel Reagan, but saw him not. None of the men were familiar to me. Had I waited too long? The cannons fired once more and fell silent. 
The ships were too far away to be hit, and the cannonballs fell into the river. Another musket cracked fire, and this was more distant. The crowd had settled some, and the soldiers were lining up in orderly fashion, thanks to their barking or officers. Everyone, please disperse, shouted a broad-shouldered man in a crisp blue coat and a sleek, freshly powdered wig. There is no danger here. Go about your business. Come now, madam said. We will leave this rabble. She walked away with Lady Seymour. I went to follow them, but Ruth was, would not move. She stood rooted on the ground, trembling against my leg as if the gale were, were blowing. Ruthie, I patted her back. It's over now. The noise is gone. No more bangs. I reached her prior fingers from me. They were stiff and shaking. She was in the grip of a fit, a small one. Oh, Lord, I beseech thee. Madam had stopped. Come along, girl, she snapped. Turn your sister loose and run ahead to prepare the meal. Ruth quivered, her teeth chattering in her head. She's a wee bit frightened, ma'am, I explained. Never heard a cannon go off before. Neither have I, asked Lady Seymour. She'll feel better once she starts to walk. Please, Lord. Hear what Mrs. said, Ruth? Walking is the best thing. Please keep her feet. Please keep her on her feet. Please make it stop. We've work to do, baby girl. My voice was as false as my smile. Please. I stepped forward, pushing Ruth ahead as I went. The The trembling stopped, but her body went limp. I picked her up and settled her on my hip, her head on my shoulders as if she had fallen asleep. Lady Seymour frowned in concern. Is she poorly? Madam cast a suspicious eye at us. No, ma'am, I like. Just tired. She is not suffering her particular ailment, is she? Madam asked, her voice cutting like a blade. No, ma'am. I lied again. She helped carry out the ashes this morning, and it tired her. Madam glared a moment longer. Lady Seymour stepped in front of Madame. The heat affects small children more than most. Make sure your sister drinks some water before any more chores. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I bobbed a, a clumsy curtsy and walked as fast as I could with the limp burden in my arms, beseeching with every step. So, Madam Seymour, um, Lady Seymour is a little bit more kind um a lot more kind toward slaves british ships continued to sail up the river all the day and all the night madam set us to polishing the silver in the in the hope that we would soon be serving dinner to the british high command on monday morning becky sent me to the washer woman with a giant basket of dirty tablecloths and serviettes so many ships had arrived by then hundreds of folks said with thousands of soldiers that we could see the patches of white sails from farther down the harbor the washerwoman's home stood empty a neighbor said she had fled at first sight terrified at the thought of invasion she wasn't the only one i carried the basket of linen back to the house on wall street put a pot of water over the fire and gathered the soap and scrubbing board. Becky was off in search of a seamstress, so Ruth helped me haul the water into the wash tub into the backyard. I gave her a small bucket and sliver of soap, and she got to work washing a pair of stockings and singing to herself. She showed no ill effect from the small fit at the battery. It had been a brief shower, not a thunderstorm. As I, scrubbed my, as I scrubbed, my mind ran in circles like a dog chasing its tail. I should take Ruth and march down to the battery. I should demand payment for helping with their arrest. No, no, no demands. I should politely ask the colonel to fill his promise, to fulfill his promise as a gentleman would. I should, should write a letter to the general. I should beg Curzon to beg Mr. Bellingham to beg whoever to get us out. I flopped the tablecloth into the rinse tub and started on a shift that had gotten mixed in with the table linens. Ruth dropped her stockings in the rinse bucket and loaded her bucket with and loaded her bucket with rocks. We don't wash rocks, Ruth, I explained. But they dirty, she said. She's cute. That is a truth, I said. The rocks were dirty and washing them would keep her calm and away from Madame. Scrub away, lass. There was no use in begging anyone. The chances of them listening to me was as good as the snowball's chance in the devil's bake oven i reached for the soap as ruth flung her half wash rocks now muddy not dirty into the rinsing tub with a clean tablecloth because before i could scold her the back door slammed i stood at the flash yellow gown by the kitchen madam had been watching us no doubt displeased that ruth was washing rocks with the tablecloths we must escape soon that is chapter 19 of chains and so the British have invaded New York. So we're going to see what happens with all that. Now Ruth is helping prepare that. Now Ruth and Isabel are helping prepare the house because the madam is excited that she's going to be able to meet with British royalty, possibly.